All right, Fernando, I like to start all of my interviews off with a little bit of a softball. Um, what was your first job in the movie and TV industry? Uh, that would be um, Acapulco on Apple TV+. Plus. <laughs> That's fantastic. Obviously, we'll dive deep into Acapulco in a little bit, but I didn't know that was your first job. That's that's awesome. Ash, that's, I was, that's... yeah, I was blessed enough to to book it um, six months after I graduated from college with my acting degree. I know it's like a very unusual narrative for people that want to go into this industry, so I feel very very blessed and very grateful that I was one of the chosen ones. <laughs> But um, yeah, it was my first job, and thankfully, it's a job that's still, you know, I I like to call it the the blessing that keeps on giving because it's opened so many doors for me, but also, um, so many first times for so many things like my first red carpet, first photo shoot, first this, first that. So, yeah, it's it's the blessing that keeps on giving, and thankfully, it keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly who were some of those like early influences or maybe was it a film that you saw that said I want to get into the world of movies you know it's really interesting because personally I wanted to start like my dream when I was a kid is I wanted to be a musician and a lot of musicians in Mexico where I was born um eventually shift into telenovela territory so in my little kid's mind being an actor just was part of the job of being a musician because a lot of people eventually do it but um interestingly enough one of the people that I used to look up to now I get to work with which is Diego Bonera in my movie that's about to come out at midnight um I've gotten the chance of seeing his entire career in um unfold right before my eyes from the moment that he started I was four years old when he started in the industry and um he was like 10 or so um, so he was definitely one of the people that I've always looked up to, but I mean, some of my biggest inspirations have always been Britney Spears and, and Lady Gaga. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Two incredible artists, right? You know, yes. just incredible artists. All right. You play in, speaking of the movie, you play in the upcoming Paramount Plus movie at midnight. What attracted you to the role? You know, it's actually really interesting. When I read the the role description, I didn't think it was necessarily for me. Um, I overall the project, what was really attractive about it was the fact that it was it's also a bilingual movie. It's a romantic comedy. It's uh, made to feel people good, and I love being part of those projects. But the fact that it was gonna film in Mexico and it showcased this international cast that that's something that matters to me a lot and and I would love to continue being part of projects of that and, and projects that portray the Latinx community in such a beautiful light and also showcase the beauty of our country Mexico um but if I'm being honest when it comes to the character I read it when my manager sent me the tape and I was like oh I feel really challenged because he's supposed to be very confident and like very just like um very um in touch with his sexuality when it comes to like flirting with people and approaching and not being afraid of of you know um like flirt and and say one or two nasty things or things like that I don't know how to say it and that's not necessarily me <laughs> so at first I I think I saw it mostly as a challenge just because I was getting a bit out of my comfort zone just because I'm not used to playing characters like that um and thankfully they believe me. <laughs> uh, they believe in me when I didn't believe in myself. So that felt nice. Looking up to Diego, um, what was it like working next to him? Um, I say this as a positive thing. It was terrifying. <laughs> like, not because he was bad uh, by any means. Uh, it, in fact, it was wonderful. He and... and in his family who were down there because um, this is also uh, the first film that he's producing through through his brand new production company, um, Three Amigos. So some of the members of his family were down there and were beautiful, but there is this scene which you will see where we're driving on a Jeep and that was my first day on set. And I just kept looking to my left because uh, he was driving the Jeep and I, I couldn't speak. <laughs> I was very starstruck. So anytime, whenever they would like cut, I would like try to like find things to get myself distracted with because I couldn't look at him. It was really, really hard. It was really hard because the only thing that kept going up to my brain was 
why am I in this position? Who said I should be here? Like who put me here right next to him? Um, even though I had met him a whole week prior to that, it was still very surreal for me. So that's why it was terrifying because I was like, I have a job to do, but I'm, I can't believe he's right next to me. And I don't know how to control my body in this situation. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one thing to look up to somebody. And then the next thing, you know, working next to them, I'm sure the anxiety was through the roof, right? Yeah. And you also want to be like, you know, it's it was his movie. He's one of the producers and like, it's a passion project of his. And like, I also wanted to prove that I was the right person for the job. I was so new in the industry, but that when we film, I hadn't even done... I hadn't even worked for a year. Um, so I feel like I felt a lot of pressure having to prove myself, you know, that they made the right call and whatnot. And I just I wanted to impress him and I wanted to know that I respect him and I respected his love and 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 for this project and that that um that I appreciated that he trusted me. So I just wanted to make sure, you know, <laughs> I was doing it right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. What's it kind of like? you know, showcasing Mexico in a different light. You know what I mean? It's not your typical film that we're used to used to seeing in that. So we're getting a love story. We're getting a, a very beautiful story that's written together and pieced together, but we're also getting the culture that surrounds it. And you talk about how important that is to you, but kind of if you can expand upon that and how um, Al Capuco and now with this can kind of change the way people see Mexico moving forward. I think um, without getting trying to get too political, we went through a time period not too long ago where my country was constantly been, uh, he, he was constantly been um, not made fun of, but like just people were expressing horribly about it. And the truth is, I know that there's a lot of unfortunate things happening in Mexico. I'm not going to deny that that's a fact, but um, all of that stuff, what's overshadowing by too much the beauty of my country and all the things that are um, need to be appreciated. Not only the people, but the cuisine, the architecture, the, the whole culture, the art, everything. There's so many things that like a lot of people don't even know about because everyone just thinks that we're a bunch of bad people, you know, for not trying to use more awful words, which is it's just really unfortunate. We just went through a period where like we were put under a really negative light, both as as Mexicans and, and the country as a place. And like I said, I'm not denying that that's part of reality, but that's not the whole reality, you know? And it's so interesting for me to see when I hear people from the States who go visit and end up loving it. And I'm like, exactly, because it's a magical place with a beautiful culture, beautiful people who are so loving and, and willing to give. Um, that I think it was time for people to see us exactly for what we actually are. You know, it's only a, a specific amount of people who commit crimes, but that also happens in the rest of the whole world. I also want to talk about, um, I want, first off, I want to congratulate you on being named one of Variety's 10 Latinos to watch. What was it like getting that news? Um, um, I was this, it was this. <laughs> It was me not being able, um, to this day, uh, it's hard for me to put it into words. Um, it's so far, I, I personally think like it's been my biggest career achievement. Like I never imagined as an immigrant, I would have the opportunity to be, you know, celebrated in such a beautiful way and with such a beautiful, um, mention, um, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I, I, again, it, it's hard for me to put it into words just because, I mean, I, I look at it and I don't think it's real. It's like when I saw my first my myself in, on screen for the first time. It feels very surreal and like it's just a dream. Um, and I don't know. I I, I guess it, it it it's really nice to to see that people are appreciating your work and that you're doing something right, but also that you're trying to do something important with that work. It's not just about the acting and like oh look my face is on a magazine. It's the fact that I know that. Me, a plus size gay Latino immigrant man, being on that magazine has an impact. Like I didn't have that growing up. Like I would open a magazine and it, it would only be people who 
I couldn't rely, um, rely on or relate to, sorry, or didn't look like me. And the fact that now I know there's going to be a lot of little Fernandos who open up that magazine and see themselves on that, on that print, print um, and can have hope for, for a better future. And, and and know that their dreams can come true. Like it's just larger than what it means to me. And that's why it's so special. Uh, speaking for something that's larger than I think that's very special is Acapulco. First off, congratulations on the very, very recent news of season three. I'm so excited. As I told you before we got there, I adore this show. The writing is incredible. It's just it's it's so sweet. It's got emotional, emotional heavyweight moments that just like I have to have the tissues handy whenever I'm watching it, if I'm being honest. But your character of Mimo is one that I think that I've loved watching this like development of of his confidence. So first off, again, again, congratulations, season three. I can't wait. I know you're excited. Um but talk about Acapulco and what that experience has been like through two seasons, going into a season three and stuff like that. It's been the biggest blessing of my life, besides the birth of my niece, um, my niece Regina. It's, um, well, first of all, it was life-changing. It gave my life an entire switcheroo. Everything changed after that. Everything is fairly different now. But um, besides being the opportunity of making my dream come true, it's also become this really... I don't know, it feels like a show that is helping this movement of diversity and 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 having um, honest, authentic, beautiful portrayals of everyone on camera. I think the thing that makes me the proudest about our show is that it's, it is a story that takes place in Mexico and tells the story of a Mexican kid fighting for his dreams, but it's a universal story about passion and and pursuing what you 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 want and what you believe in. Um, and we have the most amazing writers room, the most incredible producers, the most amazing cast, the most amazing crew, which is all Mexican and Latino. Um, we get to film in this beautiful resort in Mexico. It's truly, I know it's cliche, but it is the dream job. I just feel very blessed and really, really excited about a third season and, and keep developing the story that, like you said, I, I like to believe that Acapulco is a show that helps people heal after the few years that we've been through. So the fact that we get to keep doing that. I feel very, very blessed and we're really excited to start to get to work. Yeah.